Table 4-3, the ulna and radius. So the ulna is always very distinct with its little U part on the bone. So I always remember that U, U for ulna, yay. So this top part is the olecranon process and it matches up so greatly with our humerus. So remember on the posterior side, we have the olecranon fossa. The olecranon process goes right into the olecranon fossa. And then on the anterior part, we have the coronoid process, which do you see how that looks just like the coronoid process on the mandible? So definitely parent those terms, coronoid process to the ulna, coronoid process to the mandible. That is going to glide right into the coronoid fossa. So nice, anatomy terms matching up, how great. And do you remember how our hourglass was our trochlea? This on the ulna is our trochlear notch. So that trochlear notch is going to go right around the trochlea. So we have a few terms that match up, make sense. But there's a couple other things to learn. So one is called the radial notch. So if you look, you see one side that doesn't really have, it kind of has like a little ridge. And then if you turn to the other side, you can see a very grooved out where your finger would fit right there. That notch is the radial notch. And what do you suppose will articulate there? The radius. So the ulna has the radial notch and you're gonna learn that the radius has the ulnar notch because they go together. Then we have down at the distal end down here. So here's our head. And then this little pokey guy is the styloid process, which we've learned styloid process before on the temporal bone. So just keep that in mind that that is a parenting term. So is the head. So the way that the ulna articulates, I'm gonna show you on my little friend here. So here's the arm. So the ulna, that trochlear notch goes around the trochlea. And then in the anatomical position, we're palm facing forward. And so that will run down the pinky side. So the only motion you get with the ulna is just this hinge motion. It's a hinge joint here on the elbow. And so that is the motion that we'll get from the ulna. The ulna only does that and nothing else. The radius is the cool bone. So we'll look at the radius. That gives us more motion. Now the radius has this very distinct head with its very rounded head. And so I always think a radius of a circle, that's how I remember this bone because it has a very circular head. The neck is just below the head right there. And then we have a radial tuberosity. This is where our biceps brachii will insert. Tuberosity, if you remember, is a muscle attachment site. And then down here at our distal end, here's our ulnar notch on this side. The other side has more of a prominence, which is the styloid process. So we've learned three styloid processes now. So we have styloid process of the radius and ulnar notch. So these go together. So this is up more proximal. So the head of the radius will articulate into the radial notch on the ulna, and the head of the ulna will articulate into the ulnar notch of the radius. So they go together like that. So this is my right arm if I'm in anatomical position, and our hand can pivot. It can rotate like this. So that gives us this motion coming over the ulna like so. So that allots us that. So to know rights and lefts, first of all, you have to be in anatomical position. So we know that this part faces posterior because it makes up that smooth elbow part. So then we want to have it line up with our pinky. So it could either be here or it could be here. But the last thing we have to account into it is the radial notch. The radial notch has to face lateral so it can meet up with the radius. So if I'm on this side, you can see there's no radius for it to meet up to, so that won't work. But if I switch it to this side, it will be facing lateral, so that will allow me to have the radius be here to match up with that bone. Now the radius, I mean, you can kind of use the same logic here, but I think the easiest way to tell rights and lefts with the radius is by looking, there's this side, which is smooth, and then there's this side, which has bumps or ridges. So I just make a fist. 
And if it's on this side, the bumpy side, I'm gonna assume it's knuckles. If it's on the smooth side, I'm gonna do my palm fist side because that's smooth like that. The styloid process would be your thumb. So I'm just going to make a fist depending. So I'm on the smooth side, so I'd have to match it here. And the thumb would line up. So this hand is what matches what's happening here. Did you see how this one does not? But this one does. So this would be a right. If I'm on the bumpy side, then I would just turn my fist over and show my knuckles. And the thumb has to line up with the point. And do you see how my right hand still works for that bone? So that's not the anatomical way to tell, but that is definitely the easy cheat fast way. So let me show you this one. So this one obviously is opposite. So if we're on this side, that's our knuckle side. So do you see how it matches up with this hand here? And then if I flip it or turn it over, then I'm gonna be on my palm side. So either way, it matches.